What's cracking pimps and players? Today we're back and we're going to be doing some modeling today. But first off, I'm going to be showing you and going over some expressions in the transform sop that are really useful and I'm going to be using throughout this little segment of the Houdini for Noob series. So let's jump in. I'm going to be showing you how to center uh, an object procedurally. I'm going to be showing you how to drop it to the floor procedurally, uh, move the, the pivot procedurally and also move an object to the center of another object at the end. So let's jump into it. I'm gonna be dropping a file node down. Actually, I'll do it in a different way this time to, to show you some different ways, but you can actually do equals to bring in multiple uh, nodes. And I'm gonna be typing this in and getting an object from 3D scans. So let's just wait for that to load. And if I go and click H to center this, you can see that he is not in the middle. So uh, he's perfect for our experiment. So I'm gonna put down a transform. And as you can see, you know, you've, you've probably familiar with this a little bit, but what we'd normally do are in prior tutorials, I've moved to centroid origin, which does it once. But what I wanna do is I wanna move it procedurally. So we're gonna be using $CEX. And if you do negative $CEX, this will center it. And for the rest of them, it's just Y and then Z, and it's centering procedurally. And what's great about this is if the, uh, I add another transform in here using the uh, amazing shelf tool. And what's good about this is if I add a transform in between these on the wire, you can see that it's not moving anywhere. So it's always centering this object, and now we just need to rotate it. like so. So now we've centered him. I'm going to reverse him because he's annoying me a little bit. Reversing will reverse the normals, apparently. There we go. Um, and now how do we drop him to the ground? How do we get him onto this level here? And that's pretty simple as well. That's just using another function, which is y max and he will go up. So Y max is up and Y min is down. You can also do X max, X min, Z max, Z min. So that's pretty nice. Um, and then as you can see, my, my transform is still in the center of him. But what if I wanted to change that? You can go and toggle down your pivot transform and we can do dollar Y min and we'll get right at the bottom of this object and now we can rotate them from this center point or this um, this bottom point here. So you can also put in here CEX, CEY, CEZ and this is really useful. Uh, you don't do minus when you're doing it this way by the way. You just do it uh, like this with no negative and it will work. Um, but this is really useful. But I don't think I've talked about this yet, but in Houdini you have radial menus for a lot of different things. For example, C is your modeling menu, V is your shading and, and stuff like that. So you can get the wireframe or not the wireframe. And X is the snapping menu. And we're gonna be using primitive right now, but you can do grid, which is very useful for creating splines. So we're gonna be using primitive snapping here and I'm gonna scale this guy down to uh, Houdini size. So let's go 0 0.01 on the uniform scale and let's drop down a box. Now, what if I wanted to snap him to the top of this box? It's so easy. Um, obviously, if I hide this box, you can see that if I click on this by default, we can see that the axis is at the bottom or well, it's at the center of the scene. And that's why what we did there where we uh, dropped him to the ground and then put the, uh, we didn't have to put the axis to the ground, but dropping him to the ground allows us to snap exactly the bottom of him to an object. So if I turn this on now and make sure we have our primitive snapping selected, then we can drag this around and it will snap directly to whatever face you want. It's really good and quite accurate as well, as you can see. He's like Wilson Gromit in the wrong trousers, inseparable from this object. 
So the last thing I want to talk about is moving an object to the center position of whatever object in your scene. So this is the centroid expression and it's the most complicated out of all the ones we're using today. So let's say I create a box and then put down a transform. I don't know this position over here, let's say. I don't know that it's, you know, three on X and Y, um, but I want to move this into this position over here. Let's template it so we can see it and set it to a primitive or polygon so we can, you know, extra see it. So the way that you write this expression is centroid and then we're going to put down the path. So let's do centroid and then the path to this object. So to do a relative path, we're going to do dot dot slash or to do an absolute reference, we can do obj slash slash obj slash like that. And then we can go into our sphere and then we go into our, where are you at? Let's start typing it and it will show. Actually, no, we want transform one, don't we? Like that. And then we can close that, get rid of that because we don't want to go inside it. We just want to stop here. Uh, and then we close that off. And then we do what we want to reference. And we want D underscore X. We want the X position here. And of course, we get an error. What's error? Um, oh yeah, will it be, oh yeah, sorry, my bad, I closed this too early. So there we go, we've got it on the X position there, and we can do this X, Y, Z. Like so, and now it's centered up there, which is really nice, but what if you're lazy, like me? And I just want to be able to drag an object in and change it automatically without having to go through and change this path here. Oh, and also if you want to do a relative path, let's do that. Dot dot slash uh, transform one. That's how you do a relative path. Keep that in mind. It does the same thing. But if you move it into another node, it's not going to keep that. Uh, this isn't going to be, this won't work basically because it's not, it's relative to this position here. We're going back out of our node which is transform to and going into this. But what if I want to just have an input into this node? We only have one input, but we can do a spare input up here at the cogwheel. And basically how inputs work. So this is input one and it's referenced um, as zero, I think. No, it's, it's referenced as one. So th uh, this input is one and then you have another one, it's two. But for spare inputs, they go negative, so it's minus one. So this is actually minus one. As you can see, refer to this in expressions as minus one. So what we do do is we would go up here and delete this. We don't need this in brackets or in, a, in quotation, sorry. We do minus one. And since we have nothing in here, it's not referencing anything. As you can see, bad node reference because we have nothing. So you can go up here and drag this in. That's probably the easiest way and it's working. And it's simpler to read as well. Very nice. You can, uh, if you don't have this in the same, uh, in the same network, you can go up here and, you know, choose whatever other object you want the center to. So then we can just go through this and then, boop, uh, boop. and to go back, instead of clicking tab, you click shift tab, that works. So there we go, and these uh, spare nodes or spare inputs are represented by a little purple line, which you might not even notice at first. It's pretty subtle, but um, these are really powerful and useful uh, few, uh, further down the line when we're going to be doing some more stuff with this. I hope you guys enjoyed that, or at least got something out of it. And um, so, um, yeah, thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Bye bye.